welcome aboard. This is your captain speaking. Today I am taking you into the cockpit of an Airbus A320 for an ILS approach to runway 05 at Hamburg Airport. We will fly above the Airbus factory and I will give a brief insight of how the instrument landing system ILS works. So sink into serenity and embrace the experience. We are currently on our initial approach descending towards Hamburg. We are under radar control and receive radar vectors by ATC, which will lead us towards the localizer of runway 05. And turning right now, as we've received our clearance for an ILS approach runway 05. This means we'll be using radio signals to guide us precisely to the runway. Now, let's talk about the ILS. It consists of two main components, the localizer and the glide slope. First, the localizer. This transmits signals in the VHF range. It provides lateral guidance, aligning us with the runway centerline. The localizer antenna is located at the far end of the runway. On our PFD, you can see the localizer deviation indicator, showing our position relative to the centerline. If the needle moves to the left, we are right off the centerline and vice versa. Next is the glide slope. This transmits signals in the UHF range. It provides vertical guidance, establishing a precise descent angle, usually around 3 degrees. The glide slope antenna is located beside the runway touchdown zone. On the PFD, the glide slope deviation indicator shows our vertical position. If the needle moves up, we are below the glide slope, and down means we are above it. The CAT1, CAT2 and CAT3 ILS systems offer different minimums for ceiling and visibility. Hamburg Runway 05 is equipped with Category 3 system, which allows landings in very low visibility. For today's approach, with a good weather, the CAT3 system is not needed, so it's gonna be a CAT1 approach. As we continue our descent on the glide slope, we are now overflying the Airbus facility in Hamburg Finkenwerder. This is the heart of Airbus's narrow body aircraft production, an important site where Airbus A320 family aircraft, including our own, are being assembled. This factory also has a long history. It was used in the Second World War for the production of aircrafts. After the war, it was used for repairing ships, before it was used again for aircraft production in the 1960s. Well, let's talk about Hamburg. It's a city deeply rooted in maritime history. You can spot the river Elbe, the lifeblood of the city. The harbour of Hamburg is one of the largest in Europe, and it's always fascinating to see the mass of container ships coming and going. It's a reminder of the city's role as a major trade hub. One interesting fact about Hamburg Airport itself, it's one of the oldest commercial airports in Germany, with a rich history dating back to 1911. It's seen a lot of aviation milestones over the years. Can you spot the airport and the runway already? If you have time, You definitely should visit Hamburg. For me, it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And this is the Volksparkstadion, the home of the Hamburger SV Soccer Club. The major part of the approach was hand flown by me. The weather was nice, calm winds, good visibility, so just perfect for hand flying. We trained to be proficient in both manual and automatic flight. Hand flying is vital for system malfunctions when the autopilot is not available anymore. Technical malfunctions are very rare, but we still train extensively in the simulator to ensure we are ready for any eventuality. But now, let's focus on the landing. And the rest of the approach and landing in real time. Enjoy! Four. Hundred above. Three hundred. Minimum. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Five. Welcome to Hamburg, ladies and gentlemen. We've landed safely on runway 05. What do you think? Butter landing or not? Air traffic control told us we can vacate via taxiway Alpha 6 as no aircraft is behind us. That shortens our taxi time as we vacate the runway right at the apron. Slowing down to taxi speed. 
Today we used auto brake low and idle reverse only. And always keep your eyes and ears open, as we have to cross runway 1533, which is used for takeoff. And now turn right and follow the yellow line to vacate the runway. This is the point where we are crossing runway 1533. This is the center line. Now we are taxiing to parking stand 02 Bravo via Zulu 3 and Zulu 1 Orange. Orange? Why orange? Well, taxiway Zulu 1 has three lines. Orange, yellow and blue. Yellow is used for the big airplanes. Orange and blue can be used at the same time by airplanes with a wingspan of maximum 36 meters. The ability for two aircraft to taxi alongside each other on taxiway Zulu 1, orange and blue, enhances its overall usability. And here's our parking position already, 02 Bravo. Today we are relying on our advanced biometric guidance system today, also known as a human being. We are of course following his signs, because when he says stop, we really do stop. Good idea, huh? Couple more meters and we have reached our final parking position, so please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. And stop! Thanks for watching and auf Wiedersehen!